Bu Ida. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, Pak Rayendra and the whole uh, participants today. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, today we have a chance to attend this workshop again. That is the second meeting for our research talks. Yeah. Uh, last week we have attended the research talks one from uh, Dr. Rayendra. Uh, that discuss about how to find the research problem and uh, to enrich, enrich, yeah, to enrich our understanding in research in finance. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, last week uh, all participants can get the benefits. Yeah, for uh, speed up their complete completing the the thesis or dissertation. Uh, the aims of the second research talks today is to enhance students' insight related to how to construct and write a research paper. Yeah. So uh, this week we invite again Mr. Uh, Ryan Ra PhD. Uh, he is a qualified lecturer with many articles published in several reputable journals. Yeah. So it is lucky for us to be able to gain and enhance our insights of current issues for research in finance. In this way, we will, we will know what is the research problem and how to construct and write in the form of research paper. So, Mr. Rayendra, on behalf of Management Department, Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Universitas Brawijaya, I would like to say thank you for Mr. Rayendra for knowledge sharing to our postgraduate students as well as our lecturers, yeah, including me. Yeah, I get I get um yeah many many things. Uh, valuable for us to enrich our knowledge yeah in uh, especially in uh, research field of finance may allah bestow his blessings and mercy on uh, dr ayendra and his family yeah. i also say thank you to the all team yeah who have worked hard to organize this event very well yeah yeah, as well as Bu Ida as a moderator. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, for all of you. Likewise, we would like to thanks to the workshop participants who has attended the, this workshop. Uh, yeah, for the series of the workshop. Yeah, last week, today, and on the second October. Yeah, for the for the last uh, research talks, for the research talks three. I hope participants also get benefits uh, that can lead the participants to simplify and accelerate their completion of thesis or dissertation. Okay, uh, thank you very much for all. Welcome to join the research talk today. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Burisna, uh, for the opening speech. Uh, and now, before we start uh, the research talk, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Ray. Dr. Ray uh, is an honor with us. Uh, it is an honor for us that we have Dr. Ray today. Dr. Ray was born in Indonesia in 1983, and he awarded Bachelor of Economic in Accounting from Universitas Pajajaran in 2005 with the research type project title is the influence of crude palm oil pricing to company return on investment and residual income and in 2007 dr ray awarded master of science in investment from university of birmingham with thesis title is a comparison of the week from efficiency of southeast asia stock market and in 2013, Dr. Ray awarded PhD in Behavioral Finance from University Science Malaysia with thesis title 
Psychological Bias Explanation on Malaysia Day of the Week Anomaly. Since then, Dr. Ray have many career experience, including at 2014 until 2021, he is a senior lecturer in University Malaysia Sarawak. He also became a head of international unit, industrial and commercialization in Faculty of Economic and Business, University Malaysia Sarawak. At 2017 until 2019, Dr. Ray became a director for Unimas Business Economic and Finance Forecasting, uh, Forecasting Center from University Malaysia Sarawak. And at 2021, he became a senior lecturer in University of Bahrain. In terms of research, Dr. Ray became a managing director of International Journal of Business and Society at 2021. And he also a research fellow for Unimas FinTech and Innovation Center from 2019 until 2021. Dr. Ray also supervised many students, including students in master and PhD level. There are eight PhD students that was graduated, and he also have a lot of experience as a thesis examiner in various university, uh, in overseas, uh, for example, like in Australia. In terms of publication, uh, like uh, Bu Risna mentioned before, Dr. Ray have, uh, has a lot of uh, published articles. In total, have a 56 journal article in Scopus, and some of them has been published in a ranking journal in ABDC list. Uh, that is in Business and Strategy and the Environment Journal and in Global Finance Journal. Currently, Dr. Ray has 5H index in Scopus and 12H index in Google Scholars. So today is very good opportunity for us uh, to learn how to publish a good paper and how to conduct a good research paper because Dr. Ray have a lot of experience in publication and also have uh, many experience published in high-ranking journal. So, uh, good opportunity for us to learn uh, as much as we can from uh, Dr. Ray today. Okay, uh, now uh, we are going to start the research talk. Uh, Dr. Ray, yes. Hi, Dr. Ray. Good afternoon, Dr. Ray. Hi, hi. Yeah, how are you today, Dr. Ray? Uh, so far, so good. Thank you. Yes. Uh, today, our session uh, will be start at 1 o'clock and uh, finish until 4 p.m. And maybe in the last uh, session, maybe around uh, 45 minutes or 30 minutes, uh, we will have a discussion session. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I want to ask, uh, can, can like uh, the participant us in the middle of uh, the webinar. Yeah, uh, sure. Why not? You can always interrupt me in the middle of the the presentations. Okay. Uh, and today, maybe uh, if you want to talk in Indonesia, Dr. <laughs> is welcome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to discuss with you. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Ray, and time is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you everyone, especially for the Faculty of Economy and Business uh, Universitas Brawijaya for inviting me. So this is the second session out of uh, three sessions, which is I think the last the last one it will be next week. If, if, and then thank you also uh, for Ibu Risna, Ibu Ida, for hosting this uh, program. So as yeah, as we know that, let me share the slide first. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. If if you as what Bu Ida say, yes now okay I share it. So anyway, if you if if my voice not clear or something that unclear or something that you want to ask in the middle of presentations, uh, feel free to do so. It must better rather than in one way 
in one way communications for me is 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 boring, right? So yeah, uh, just interrupt me anytime that you like. Anyway, uh, yeah, let let's start the the sessions. So as we have as for today, we have learned. Uh, today we're going to learn about how to construct and write a research paper, and it's it's actually more on the sharing knowledge, and maybe whatever I told you or what I will tell you to, in these sessions may be quite different with what uh, some of uh, other uh, speaker or other webinar that you have attended, but at least this is my experience. So um, yeah, you can apply it, you cannot apply it, but I I learned it, how to say, I, I learned this, as I told you last week, I learned it through the, uh, through the whole process of my PhD actually. So uh, to give you overview that during my PhD, we are, uh, the PhD student, it, you are lucky actually in Brawijaya in my in my school of management in in USM. They never the supervisor always believe the capability of each student to publish. So there is no way. For example, I I came to my supervisor uh, office and asked them how to construct a research paper, which is actually I I did it I did it once, and then my supervisor told me this. Uh, she said to me that Ray, you are not a PhD student and you are graduate from UK. Of course, I don't think I have to teach how a fish to swim. So you have to find a way how to write a publication. And that's why during my period, I mean, in around 2009, 2010, um, our, my write up is so rubbish, rubbish like rubbish. It's so, it's, yeah, it's, it's rubbish. And because no one teach me how to do so, and of I, and when I attended, no one tell me how to do so until I email one uh, professor, which is I, as I showed to you guys, the paper last week, which is Michael Doling. So I, I asked him about how to write a paper. He told me that okay, why not you just try to benchmark one paper and then try to replicate it and then from there I learned how to construct and write a research paper which is the one that I, I, was, I want to share to you guys uh, today. So through that process I found that actually publication is only a game and I always separate research and how to publish it. Sometimes a good research cannot be published. Sometimes a, 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 a very bad research can be published. So it made me think that how come a good research cannot be published? And sometimes when you read a paper, how come this kind of paper can be published? So I found out that a publication is quite different with research. And then all of this research and publish, publication is only about a game. And I always treat publications as a game. As a game. Hey, how, why not? Okay. As a game. I, I don't need to explain this uh, to you as Buida already tell you about my profile. So what it means by publication is a game. As Buida already told you that I born in 1980s and 1833 for uh, precisely. And I grew up with a console game like Sega, Nintendo, Spica, and so on. So when I was six, seven years old, I played the Spica or Nintendo or Sega. And then uh, when I play game, as, as, as you can see at the PowerPoint here, it is one game from, I think, from Spica, and the game name is uh, Donkey Kong. So when you want to play a game, you have to know three things, right? How to start the game, how to play the game, and how to win the game. So the publication is the same things like a game. So how you how how you to how to start it, which is uh, last week you already we we not you we already uh, discussed about how to start it, which has come from the idea. How to find, yeah, how to find the idea, how to tune it up, and so on and so forth. That's how to start. Yeah, that's how to start the the, the publication. So after. Yeah, uh, excuse me, uh, the participant maybe can uh, mute themselves uh, so we can uh, hear. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. So, yeah, anyway. So that's, that's, uh, that's why I told you about publication is about the game, how, you st how to start it, how to play, and how to win. And sometimes when you want to play a game, you know which strategy is the best so you can win the game. So like I, I just told you earlier about the publication is the same things. When, you, when we talk about how to start, this is the one where if in the game, we just simply push the start button and then we play the game. In publications, which is we, or we already discussed this last week, is we have to find a good idea and then write the good research gap. If you have the ideas and then you know what is the research gap, then you can start the publications game. But again, sometimes, I already told you this earlier, sometimes good, bad idea also can be published. I know some, some speaker or maybe some webinar uh, speaker told you that or facilitator told you a good idea make a good publications yeah but it's not necessary like that why I will tell you in the end so that's how to start which is last last week and how to play is what the one that, that is this is the one that we're going to discuss today which is about how to construct a research paper and how to write about it and if you play in console game you have to know okay the <coughs> The A button is for which uh, is for which movement. If the B button is for which movement. So in the publication, it's the same things, but it's about how to construct a research paper and how to write it. Okay, and this is why again I keep I will I will keep bugging you with this sent, uh, with this uh, statement. This is why sometimes you will find a very just so so or a very normal paper can publish in a high impact journal. Meanwhile, some journal, some idea that really good fail to publish in a high impact journal. Why? Because the author do not know how to play it. Or in other words, they do not know how to construct and how to write it. This, this how to play in publications is actually I learn it in 2016 it's just recently i i know how to how to play in publications game five years ago so most likely most likely what we're going to learn in publication everyone will know that okay if you write a paper you need five sections at five sections sorry which is introduction liter literature review data and method result and conclusions right this is the basic things. You, you, I think you have you have known this since your undergraduate that okay, if I make one research paper that I want to publish either in the national journal, like Sinta one, Sinta two, anti Sinta six. Yeah, Mister Kok, sebentar lima belas menit sudah mulai. Kamera mau kemana? Hari ini hari apa? Oh sab. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So. That's the very basic things that you have to learn. That I, not you have to learn. I, I think all of you already know about this. That the content in in a publications is as simple as you have the introductions, you have the literature review, you have the data and method, you have the result, and then you have the conclusions. That is the the very basic things that you need uh, to have in in a in a, a manuscript. The 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 Interesting question is that we already know in a research paper, you have to have introduction, literature review, data and method, result and conclusion, but how come we still cannot publish it in a reputable journal? Right, that's, that's the questions now. Okay, I know, no need, no, I, I, no need to attend this webinar. I think everyone already know a research paper need five sections, right? As, yeah. Uh, oh. Ep, sorry, Ibu. Termit pula ibunya. So, ter. Okay. Uh, sorry, Dr. Ray. Uh, okay. Please, everyone, uh, for the participant, can mute themselves uh, so we can continue for the research talk and can hear clearly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Ray. Sorry. Yeah. So, 
so anyway so yeah so uh yeah anyways so to to have this uh to have this and not to have to have a good research paper and to have a research paper the difference is the word good right and the problem is uh, when i receive i, I think i now i receive six papers the problem then when i look at those papers is about how to construct it maybe you have an idea maybe you have a, a good idea but you do not know how to write and how to construct it and but but please remember this even though after this webinar you have a knowledge how to construct and how how to write still your paper is good still cannot penetrate high impact journal the reasons most likely is the statement that i gave to you which is we're going to discuss in the end of the the webinar don't don't get how to say don't get the that imposter syndrome that you think that you not deserve in this publication game because sometimes a good paper cannot publish in a very high impact journal an, an ordinary paper can penetrate that journal all right i will don't worry i will tell you why after this but uh, my point is that after this webinar don't get uh, don't say that oh isn't it ray told us that if we have how to construct how to how to write we can penetrate the high impact you know sometimes you need the x factor which i'm going to discuss about the, this x factor in the end of our sessions though um this is the the style that i always do uh i call it as a benchmark if you love the anime of naruto for example there is one uh one character in naruto that have the setting and eyes that when he's any movement that he he saw from the eyes he can copycat that movement or in car we call it a, or in the operational management we call it as a benchmark for example honda crv and the car from china which is the DS, dsfk m506 so this the same the same uh, shape the same features but different price but still both of them are mpv car so i do believe is in publication is also the same when you want to start when you want to start construct a research paper or you want to write a research paper and you are not a fairly prominent you are not a prominent professor or you are not uh, you are not a native speaker or even the native speaker michael doling is actually an iris and then he's he himself saying that you need a to benchmark paper so this is not like what we did during our elementary school in indonesia we call it the, in, in sd right when we are in the elementary school in the scholar dasar uh, when the teacher told us to make one story and then we start to make a story okay once upon a time blah 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 and so on and so forth yeah that one is during your elementary school which is a very basic writing in publications game is different if you are a beginner i repeat this if you are a beginner do not attempt to write by yourself to 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 achieve a very good journal i repeat one more time if you are a beginner or you are maybe you are only uh, yeah let's say a beginner in the research publications and then you start to write a paper by yourself okay i have the idea blah 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 and so on and then you write it so and then you hope that you can publish believe me it will not work i did that i did that in 2010 until 2016 my highest corpus is i think only q3 or q2 bahasa inggris meteng gue hmm. so <laughs> so the, the this is the thing that I, i you have to understand if you are a beginner in research publications please do the benchmark strategy unless unless you are a gifted researcher is there any gifted researcher yes uh in my during my phd study during my doctoral study 
we have one group consists of 20 research fellow. I think Bu Risna also know about this. We have 20 research fellow. Uh, I, I, ha I have friend now become associate professor in Western Sydney, which is Hassan Golipur from Iran. You, if, if, you, if you ask him what is his strategy, he will say benchmark. We have one uh, uh, Minang in uh, Minangis uh, with the, from Padang. Uh, uh, Dr. Yudi Fernando now is associate professor in Kuantan. It's also, if you ask him, he will say benchmark strategy. I have friend, other friend from Mehran Ejati now is also in Edit Cohen. It's the same things, benchmark strategy. However, we have also one friend, one friend that never do benchmark, but still published in, in, in a high impact journal. Out of those 20 PhD students in my, in my group, in our group, only one out of 20 are gifted researcher, meaning to say that she, not here, she, she, she didn't do this benchmark strategy, but still can achieve a high impact journal. The rest 19, we are doing the benchmark strategy. This benchmark strategy. So if I think, you have to you have to know yourself are you a gifted researcher or you are a uh, you are on you're not a gift i mean you are just just a, a new player in this in this game so you have to know yourself then you choose your strategy for me if, if you are like me which is i'm not a gifted researcher i will do the benchmark strategy so what is a benchmark strategy when in research publications when you want to start a benchmark strategy, you have to know your target. This is why last week I told you that before start a before start a research, you have to know what is your uh, targeted journal. You have to make five five targeted journal. So before you okay, I have an idea about if you still remember last week, astronomy and uh, stock market predictions. I have this idea. So I know that this idea can be published to this journal, that journal, and that journal, and that journal, five journal. You have to know your target. Why? Because from that target journal, you take one paper from that targeted journal, and then you benchmark about how to write that to, to, to that journal. That's what I call as a benchmark strategy. I give you a very applicable or the real example which is from me. So there's one paper published in Ecological Economics by Eva Hartova, Har Horvatova, sorry, 2010, about impact of environmental performance on firm performance, short-term cost, and long-term benefit. This one. This is how it... This... So this is the this is what I, I I what I mean by benchmark. So I have this one paper from Eva Harfotova, and then I read the paper, I read the paper, and then I read how he, this uh, professor construct the write ups. So I read sentence by sentence, and then paragraph by paragraph. I repeat, I read sentence by sentence, paragraph by paragraph. Why? Because I want to feel how Har Harfotova construct her paper to be published in ecological economics. So, for example, if you uh, I can so, let, let me read the first paragraph. How does environmental performance, blah, 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 and so on. So I, I did the same things. But of course, I rephrase it. We have different, actually, we have a same topic, but different research because this research is about short term cost. Ours is more on the environmental emissions. So I read one by one paragraph and then I construct it. As is, I'm not as easy as that's how what I call as a benchmark. All right. So from this paper, because at first, I want to target the ecological economics, but I end up in the in the higher journal, which is BSE, Business Strategy and the Environment. The impact factor is ten point three. 
So I think ecological economic is only eight or nine point something. But I, but this is this is the benefit when you do a benchmarking. So my point is that if you really want to publish in good journal, benchmark from that journal, do the same thing. So you have to pick yours. What is your benchmark uh, or targeted journal? So, and then comes the second things. Which journal is a good benchmark journal? I always benchmark my paper with the Q1. Q1, Q1 journal actually at, during my master degree, I always think that the Q1 journal, the journal of finance, financial economic, business venturing, it's very hard to understand, right? But that one is so 1990s or to early 2000 with all those uh, calculus or mathematical equation and so on and so forth. Now the trend is shifted. Therefore, it's very easy to understand the paper from top journal. Therefore, when you, I ask you to pick your targeted journal, don't choose the Q3, Q2 as your targeted journal. At least you targeted the Q1. In case you cannot hit the Q1, you can go to the Q2. But if you hit the Q3, if your targeted journal is Q3, most likely, if you if you fail to the Q3, I, I give you example our journal, International Journal of Business and Society. I'm the managing editor. If you ask me, okay, Dr. Ray, so I benchmark from IJBS, I will say no. Why IJBS is only Q2, Q3? Why you want to benchmark from Q2 and Q3? Go to the higher one, which is Q1. Why? Let's say you submit to IJBS and then got rejected. The only way to move is to go to Q4 or maybe Sinta Sat, Sinta 1 or Sinta 2. All right. And don't forget what I told you earlier. Sometimes a just so so research or ordinary research or not an or average research can be published in a in a journal, right? I thought you earlier this. Just imagine that an average journal, an average research published in Scopus Q3, and then you benchmark that. I believe your research will be lousy. Therefore, you have to benchmark from the Q1 or Q. At least, no, I will not say Q2. Benchmark from the Q1. If you still remember the, the last week one that I gave you the example from Strategic Management Journal, you can benchmark also from that one. Why? Because it's Q1. All right. So, uh, and then why I want to show you this? Because in the end, in the end, there is no top or prominent professor in this paper, right? Uh, this Maria Contessa is only from small university in Pontiana. I'm in from I'm from uh, Unimas Sarawak, and there is no top scholar. There is no uh, like Michael Dowling, Brian Lucy, who else? Daniel Kahneman in this name, or even Eva Har Harfotova is not here. But I still can penetrate higher journal, right? So the key point is the benchmark i will keep telling you if you if you invited me to many talk about how to how, what is the strategy i will keep saying the benchmark that's the the key the key the key word in the publications game the benchmark i give you an example uh, let, let's go back to the game how to play when you want to play the donkey kong you and your brother or your sister when you play the donkey kong you keep fail and then, because you keep fail, you don't want to play the game. And then you ask your brother to play it, or your sister to play it. And then your brothers can win the game. And then finish the Donkey Kong. What will you do? Of course, you will ask your brother, right? How how, how you did that? How can you finish the game? And then your brother 
do not want to tell you. So what's next? You ask him to play again. So he play again, and then you look how he play. The way you look how he play is actually the benchmark. Oh, okay. To to finish this stage is you have to jump twice, or you have to to kill the King Kong, or you have to wait three seconds before you go to the ladder, and so on and so forth. Why? Because your brother will not tell you how to finish the game. So you benchmark his strategy. So the same things in the publications. If you ask, if I ask Eva Harfotova, how you publish in the good journal? Oh, okay, Ray, you have to invite me for a webinar, or you have to invite me as a co-author, or you will, or he will, or she will never reply my email. Right. So the only way to have the same level, or at least to pursue the same level with Eva Harfotova is I have to benchmark the paper. Now, if you all of you have your research now and you and you have your article now, check again. What is your target journal? What, what is your target journal? And have you look how that target journal a, a article that published in that journal, writing style. You have to check the writing style. If not, most likely you will, most likely you cannot publish in that journal or even the lower journal. Why? Unless, unless you are the gifted scholar or gifted researcher that I told you earlier, which is in my group, we only have one person out of 20. The gifted researcher, yes, maybe you are part of it. If you think you're not the gifted researcher, please do the benchmark. So, okay, what I learned from the benchmark now, I, I'm talking about the benchmark that I, uh, the strategy that I saw in many articles that I read in the top journal. First, their content or their outline of the introduction section is like this. Whenever you open any journal article the, from the top one, their outline will be like this. There will, the first and second paragraph will be about the research gap, followed by one, one paragraph about research context, followed by one paragraph about the summary of the research, followed by one or two paragraphs about the contributions, and end by one paragraph about the closing. I, I know that some of the journal, or maybe the reviewer in Sinta 1, Sinta 2, yeah, Sinta 1, Sinta 2, Sinta 3, Sinta 4, and until 6, they will say, why you put contributions in the introduction? Because you are benchmarking a lower tier journal and you submit to low tier journal. But if you aim a higher journal, you just put the contribution in the introduction. If, let's say, after you try in Q1, rejected, Q2, rejected, Q3, the reviewer said, why contribution in introduction? The only thing that you need is just to delete that paragraph, correct? You just need to delete that paragraph. If the reviewer, maybe the reviewer never review a top journal, then just follow them. Just follow them. But if you are, if you want to get a good article, please remember this again. I, I tell you one more time. Your introductions. This is the, the lesson learned that I get from the benchmark. Most of the paper. The first and the second paragraph will be a research gap, followed by one paragraph about research context, followed by one paragraph about summary, followed by one, one or two paragraphs about contributions, and end by one paragraph about closing. So not right. So let me stop share this one. I saw you the example. Let me show you the example about that. 
yeah, I have. Uh, wait, I saw you this. I opened first this one and this one. Okay, let me share this one. Okay, as I, I show you first one paper published in Strategic Management Journal. This is the one that I always remember last week. I, I tell that I always benchmark this paper for any type of my research. If you still remember, I, I told you that the first is research gap, one to two paragraph or two to three paragraph, all right? You can see here, this is a research gap, which is they say that, okay, there's an agency problem. And they said that agency problem can be solved by compensations. However, that compensations have a, have a weak and mixed finding, this first paragraph. So the research gap is about theory and empirical. If you still remember last week, we learned about theory and empirical. This is theory and empirical. And this is the how to fill in that, uh, that research gap. One of the one reason for that mixed finding can be about their composition scheme, which is consistent with upper echelon theory. So two, I think three paragraph. Yes, three paragraph is about research gap. Uh, research gap. Sorry, research gap. One, two, and three. That's how this paper develop how construct a research paper. Let me share you another paper, Strategic Management Journal, right? I give you Najef. That one is not finance. That one is more to strategic management. As uh, this one is the finance paper from Professor Lim Kamping, UM, and Goh Kim, Go Kim Leng. They are my PhD examiner. All right. So look at this paper introduction in a series of papers from Amihud and Mendelssohn. Advocate the firm, blah, blah, blah. So they will say that this is the empirical and empirical. You guys still remember last week about empirical and empirical as research gap? This is the example. Ami Hood say that liquidity increase the firm value. However, others say that no, it's not liquidity. First paragraph. And this is again, remember in the strategic management journal, their style is one reason for the mixed finding, blah, blah, blah. Correct? Chia et al. Uh, which I think Chia is the PhD student of uh, Dr. Lim Kan Peng and Prof. Goh Kim Leng. They said that, okay, how, why there's a mixed finding? Because uh, this is the, this is how they, they fill in the gap. This is definitely the gap. So this paper also three paragraphs for research gap. All right. So what is research context? Most of Indonesian paper, most of Indonesian paper, we, we love to emphasize on research context. When you emphasize on research context, the editor will say that, okay, if your paper is only about Indonesia, then don't send to us. Why you, have to need, why you need to send to us? Send to Indonesian journal. Why not make it become qualitative? Why? Because editor want their the published paper in their journal to be cited. And the editor want to have a paper that contribute to the discussions in the literature review. Indonesia is only the research context. So if you say that Indonesia is, is very unique, blah, 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 and so on, and then make, okay, if Indonesia is so unique, how Malaysia, researcher or maybe Vietnamese researcher or from India researcher or from Pakistan researcher can learn from your research. And most of Indonesia paper in IJBS that I receive and I read, the first and the second paragraph is always about Indonesia. For example, they will dis you will dis the Indonesian paper will discuss based on the undang-undang, blah, 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 and so on. Based on the command uh, uh, what the keputusan kepres blah 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 based on the undang-undang otda otonomi daerah blah 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 and so on okay if you if you are talking about the autonomy local autonomy 
legal act. So how Malaysian researcher can learn from that? And at the moment you 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 sell your research context first, it will give impressions. I have to reject this paper for the editor during the desk review meeting. So where you want to put that part? You put it after your research gap. How many paragraphs? Only one paragraph. I give you example, this paper. This study does re-examine Bursa Malaysia apart from blah, blah, blah. Malaysia present an ideal case. Uh, this is, you, uh, please, be, uh, please look at this, sen this sentence. It's really good. Malaysia present an ideal case for other developing country. So if you want to say that Malaysia, we choose Malaysia because Malaysia it will be a good case study for other developing countries. So country from Vietnam, Indonesia, India, uh, Brazil, Russia, or maybe China can learn from the case of Malaysia or because Malaysia is only, only the research context here. Why? Because one, this one, two, this one, only two, or three, sorry, three, this one. And this is how you write a research context. One, two, three, research context. But put it after your research gap. Put it after your research gap. I show you another example about research context. And now you check your, how you write your research paper. Oops, sorry, I haven't shared it. Oh, sorry for that. And this is from my supervisor. I don't want to share my paper because later on you think that I'm boasting my paper. So I saw you this. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Malaysia offer. Okay. Can you see this one? Malaysia offer a unique environment. Let examining relationship between diversification and firm failure for numerous reasons. First, second. I don't got third. Uh, got third. Research context. I repeat one more time. Malaysia over unique relationship and for numerous reasons. First, second, third. This is what we call as research context. If you ask me how many paragraphs for research context, maximum two paragraphs. I repeat, maximum two paragraphs. You can make it one paragraph, but you also can make it two paragraph. Avoid to make it three paragraph. Avoid to make it three paragraph. Maximum, let's say maximum uh, two paragraph, maximum. But usually it's only one paragraph. This is what we call as a research context. Now, after this, then we go to the summary. In our first objective, in some blah, 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 contributions. The study contribution is threefold. Remember the one that I just told you that you need one or two paragraph for contributions? This one, this, this study contribution is threefold. First, second, third. And this is the closing. I think closing is easy, right? This is the closing. So this is the contributions, one, two, three. It's the same things like all paper that I just showed to you. It's the same style. In our empirical, uh, this is the summary. Same things. One, two, what well, banyaknya? Three, also three. But you know why I say so many? Because they make it, um, the paragraph become so much. This is the contribution. This is the, Closing, the reminder of the paper. I think this one, everyone know about this, right? So one closing paper or one closing statement. How about another paper? Same story. Same story. I already closed it. No, I haven't closed it. Let me open this one. Our study, this is strategic management journal. I think not all of you from finance, right? I saw you from a strategic management journal. Our study make a numerous contributions first. Oh, they have uh, two paragraphs. Second, for the contribution. If if you if you I have I have so many paper published 
No, uh, I mean, I have downloaded so many paper pubs in the Q1. They will have the same style. Everything, everyone will have the same style because uh, that's how you, you write a paper. I, I saw you, this is the last one from for those people doing leadership, from leadership quarterly, same style. I think some of you maybe from leadership, remember, research gap. In past several years, this one is... Uh, this one is empirical and empirical. Well, they have four paragraph only for the the what the research gap is okay. So everything is the same. Well, not everything. I mean, all all top journal they will have the same strategy. This is why I told you that when I I learned about the benchmark strategy, they will have the same outline. Research gap, research context, summary, contributions, closing. Oh, it's it, it's it's because it's about this. This is the outline in introductions. Research gap is one to two par. Uh, sorry, two to three paragraph. Of course, the leadership quarterly they have four paragraph. It's okay, uh, but at least you have two to two to three paragraph research gap. Dua sampai tiga uh, paragraph for the research gap. For research context, one to two paragraph, then you make the summary, then you make the contributions, then you make the closing. I think closing is the easiest part. Right? The closing is the easiest part. So there is the introductions. This is, if you look all the Q1, I keep, when you want to benchmark it, it will be like that. Now, the question is, I know that some of you already have your draft, your draft, to make a to, to ready for submissions. Now look at your draft. Look at your draft. Check your draft now. Look at your introductions. Is it your introductions? The first and the second paragraph is about resource gap or not? Then check again. Is it you have resource context and are you overselling your research context or not? Remember overselling the one that I just uh, tell you earlier? Is it one to two paragraph research context? Do you have it? After that, is it followed by a summary? Do you have the contributions one to two paragraph, the contribution of study? And then do you have the closing or not? Check in your final draft or your rough draft in your introduction sections, do you have these five elements or not? If no, if you're missing one, it will be very hard for you to penetrate Q3 journal. I'm not saying Q1 now. It will be very hard for you to penetrate Q3 journal, Q, Scopus Q3 journal. This one's still Scopus. We are not talking about the high impact. I'm just still talking about the Scopus. So please remember, that you have to check first. Okay, Ray said that, sorry, that Ray said that I have to check, I have to have these five elements. Check now in your uh, rough draft. All right. Now go to the literature review in your chapter two. The literature review is for me, is have the same, uh, the same method or the, I have applied the same things. When I check the when I benchmark from the top journal, they always have theories and hypothesis development. Theories and hypothesis development. However, be careful. The theories in your research paper don't make it so extensive, become more than three paragraph. I repeat, do not make it more than three paragraph. How to write it is after this slide. I will show you how to write it. Don't make it more than three paragraphs. How about hypothesis development? Same story. Do not make it more than two or three paragraphs. So how to write a good theories and hypothesis development? Check your targeted journal. That is very important. Why? Because of one, certain journal, they do not care whether you have theories or not. Maybe it built from an uh, intuit uh, from empirical findings. Maybe you will put it on the chapter three 
when you want to develop the estimations model. So check your targeted journal. Paper published in your targeted journal have the theories or not. Economics journal, economics journal, I think may, some of you may become from economics journal. Most likely they do not discuss theories in their chapter two. I repeat one more time. Economic journals, like Journal of Development Economics, Economic Studies, Economic Literature, uh, World Development, and many economics journal, maybe they do not discuss the theories in their chapter two, or maybe they do not discuss it extensively in the chapter two. So especially for the economic uh, student or economics researcher, please be careful when you want to write your chapter two in your research paper. Look at your targeted journal, look at paper that publish, paper that publish in that journal, do they have yeah do, do, do they have the do they have the, the the do they have the theory sections in their chapter 2 or not finance and accounting some journal have some journal do, they don't have finance accounting and finance if you're a student from accounting and finance some journal they will have one sections for theories. Some journal, they don't care if you have one section for theories or not. So again, check again your targeted journal. I'll give you an example. Ours, accounting organization and society, then they really care about theories. But you check another journal in the Emerald, for example, they don't, oh, but Emerald they don't have Q1. Uh, let's say what another journal. Mm, accounting and finance. Or accounting and okay, accounting and business research (ABR). They don't. They actually, in this journal, they 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 do not ask you to have a, a, a sections about theories. However, in other journal of accounting and finance, they will ask you if you still remember Najef Emerging Market Review, Corporate Finance. They ask you to make one section about theories. If you are from HR leaderships, HR leadership, or else uh, operate no HR and leadership and marketing. Usually, they need theories in the literature review. Operations is like finance. Some have, some do not have. Therefore, be careful. Look at your targeted journal. Look at how paper published there. Do they have the theories or not? All right. And then hypothesis development, you have to have it if you are doing quantitative research. I repeat one more time, if you have, if you have, uh, if, if you have, you are doing quantitative research, you have to have hypothesis development. So now, how to write it? Writing a theory. Let's say the custom or the norms or in the journal that you in your targeted journal need you to write a theory so how to write it you only need to write two and three paragraph i repeat you only need two or three paragraph the first paragraph is to explain what is the theory all about how the theory relate to your research context the common mistake the common mistake of the beginner is that when you write a theory, you write only about the history of the theory, which is the reviewer or the editor do not care. Why? This is not a thesis. This is not a dissertation. If you're writing a thesis or you're writing a dissertation, yes, you have to do that. But this is a research paper. Research paper different from thesis or dissertations. You cannot write the history of agency theory in your research paper. You cannot write the history of theory of planned behavior or upper echelon theory or what else? Um, uh, packing order theory, uh, capital asset pricing model. You don't need to write the history of it in research paper. You write it in your thesis, you write it in your dissertations, but do not write it in your research paper. 
In your research paper, you just need to explain what is the theory all about. Okay, agency theory is about the conflict of interest between the agent, which is manager, and the principal, which is the owner. But, and then you relate to your research. Oh, okay, upper echelon theory said that the, the characteristic of the leader in the organizations will affect the company uh, performance or will affect their strategic choice. Research based view theory from uh, what from Barney say that uh, the resources owned by uh, organizations will, if, if utilized efficiently, it will make the company achieve competitive advantage. No need to explain, okay. Then you explain the RBV from the history of Barney 1991, and then they make this one, and they are, and no need, that one is for your dissertation. Okay, so the first paragraph, you can explain what is the theory and how the theory relates to your research context. Second and or third paragraph, why I put or third paragraph, because you need only two or three paragraphs. So your second and or third paragraph elaborate how the theory explain the relationship between your X and your Y. <laughs> right, your X and your Y. So please remember this. I, I, I saw you directly the example. I have, if you have questions, let me know. If I'm too fast, also let me know. Don't worry about it. Okay, I, this one. Strategic Management Journal. Uh, they use one, oh, sorry, about agency theory. Agency theory, the vast majority of corporate governance theory and blah, 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 blah are based on agency theory. This theory is used to better understand how CEO so blah, 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 and so on. This is the, the definition. And after that, they use that theory, second and third paragraph, how that theory relate to their research. How that theory relate to their research. That's it. If you see this paper in Strategic Management Journal, they don't talk about the, the history of agency theory because this is not dissertations. This is not your thesis. That's it, two to three paragraph. If I am, let's say I'm, I'm writing a paper about upper echelon theory, or let's say I'm doing theory of planned behavior, what I'm going to do in the benchmark, I'll show you what usually I do. I copy paste this, uh, wait, let me stop share after this. I copy paste this sentence, right? And then I copy paste, sentence. I stop share. I share you my Microsoft Word. I, oh, okay. I, I hope you can see my Microsoft Word. If you cannot, you don't see my Microsoft Word. Let me know. Okay. Uh, this is the 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 one that I copy paste from the the the, the strategic management journal, right? I can make a paper, I can make one paragraph same like this, what you should, let's say I, I will use, let's say I will use a upper echelon theory, okay? So what I will do, this is what I'm going to do. Let me zoom it, I is too, sorry for that, okay. So I will say that uh, the, the, so let's say my research is about let's say my research is about leadership leadership style and financial innovation. Let's say I'm using leadership style and my research is about leadership style and financial innovation. So I will say that the literature of leadership commonly use uh, upper echelon theory to explain to explain the role of leader perhaps leader characteristics in financial decisions and i will put like this citation why i put citation Later on, I will find the citations, period. 
this theory same right this theory this theory okay if i want to avoid uh, i want to avoid the plagiarisms i can say that i can put that uh, i put comma suggesting that blah 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 blah, blah, blah like that suggesting that suggest I, I i forgot what is upper icon theory but at least like that suggesting that blah, blah 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 and then i can put that specifically upper echelon theory assume that leadership style are good for i don't know I, I, this one is i only guessing for financial innovation like that so this is what i call as a benchmark it's almost similar with this one all right suggesting so that see oh, let's say let's say i copy paste this i know it's not about agency theory why I want to copy paste this? I will show you another things. Then, let's say this is your new paragraph, your benchmark from this paragraph. After that, you only need before you go to the proofread. You can go to open Grammarly. I will open my Grammarly. I will check. Okay, let's say I delete this. Then I will, I will check it. Oh, okay. Financial in the in of financial decisions and so on and so forth. Then I check it one by one. Like that. It outlined a number of different assumptions. Uh, oh no, you can check this one. So this is Okay. This is the, the, the one that I taught you about benchmarking. One paragraph to write the theory. That's it. So that's why also you need to have one, one paper to, to, to be your benchmark. All right. I close this one. I show back you to my slide. And then elaborate how theory can explain the relationship between X and Y. Oh, uh, I don't know how to elaborate it. Don't worry. If you do not know how to elaborate it, do the same things. You go, you check that targeted journal, how they elaborate it. Oh, this is how they elaborate the journal. If they know how to elaborate, uh, if you already see it, you benchmark from there, how they write it. You're not copy pasting. Why? You Unless you're copy pasting, you 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 change only like that. Just now you because agency theory, you change to upper echelon. Of course, you will not pass the turn it in software. You need you need to rephrase it, but at least you have an example to follow. That what I call as benchmark. Same same case for the hypothesis development. It's only need two to four paragraph. Elaborate about the previous findings. Do not report. This is the, another common mistake in the beginner paper. You report the findings. It's not only you. I also did that during my PhD time. Why? Because no one tell me. Now, yours is different. Someone already tell you, don't report it. And if your supervisor, your promoter saying, do not report, do not report. And then you confuse like what this professor means by do not report. This is this is the reporting things. Santoso 2009 report that blah, 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 blah. He died at all, conduct a similar study and find that blah, blah, blah. Lee and Lin reveal that. So this is reporting. So boring. You do this, for sure you got rejected. So two and four paragraphs. Do not report. This is the example. Do not report. Formalize the hypothesis correctly. This is the interesting story. 
you know, sometimes the reviewer do not understand how to make a good hypothesis. Okay. Why? Because maybe the reviewer, the reviewer is not from your field. Or maybe the reviewer, not all reviewers have a good econometrics background. Right. Or maybe the professor that review your paper become a professor because maybe he or she maybe only a free rider. So when sometimes when you formalize the hypothesis correctly and the reviewer asks, your hypothesis is wrong. Okay. So how to avoid this kind of reviewer? If you want to avoid this type of reviewer, I give you example. Uh, let, let me go back to that Microsoft Word, much better. If you still remember that if your x is categorical or dummy variable, sorry for that, let me up. Okay, let me, I, I think you can see this. If not, I can make it more bigger, let's say 20. Okay, I think, okay. If your X is categorical or dummy variable, usually your hypothesis will be, you cannot say, usually like this. Uh, let's say gender and, gender and financing decisions. Let's say this is your research. Gender is one zero. Let's say one is woman, zero is man. So you can say that if you, if you have you have gender and financing decisions or financing or portfolio performance, let's say go to, okay. Let's say you are doing portfolio management, portfolio performance. So how you make the hypothesis? Woman, manager outperforms the portfolio management of men, managers fund managers okay let's say this is this is the correct hypothesis but if i'm not from econometrics if i'm not from if i'm not if i'm not have a strong statistic i will find this hypothesis is wrong so to avoid that you can put that the hypothesis woman fund manager have positive relationship with the portfolio performance performance or in other words why because actually this one is not acceptable in in, in econometrics, because why? Because your X is categorical. So you cannot put, simply put like this for your hypothesis. Therefore, you can put like this. Or in other words, why? To avoid the reviewer that not coming from your field or not having a good econometrics background. This is my suggestion. Another example, if you have moderator, If you have moderator, how to make the hypothesis? Let's say the moderator is M, you have IV is X, and DV is Y. So you can say that M will strengthen or weaken, it depends on your empirical findings, M will strengthen Let's say the empirical finding so the, the moderator will strengthen your relationship. So you put M would strengthen the positive effect of X on Y. Or you can put the positive effect 
of x on y would be strengthened by m if you have moderator. What is the common mistake? Which is I did it also because as I told you, no one told me about, never, no one uh, teach me about these things. So the, the correct one, the, the wrong one, the, the most, the common mistake. So the common mistake is M has a moderating effect on the relationship between X and Y. This is the common mistake. I put double straight. Very common mistake. If you have moderator. How about mediator? Let's say M is your mediator, X your yeah, independent variable, Y is your uh, dependent variable. The mediator can be said that will mediate the of X on Y. You can put like this. Why is another common mistake? Look at your research. Are you using regressions? If yes, of what the word correlates? Most of the research, uh, not most, the, not, not most, this is the common mistake. You put your hypothesis that X has positive correlations on Y. Okay, your study is about correlation or causality? Or is simply, simply put, you're doing regressions or not? If yes, why you put correlations? Okay, so uh, this one is wrong if your study is causality. I put double straight through. Okay. All right, uh, that is the example how the common mistake in hypothesis, uh, formulas the hypothesis uh, correctly. So again, the easiest way is that you have to benchmark from the targeted journal. You look, your targeted journal, how they make the hypothesis? Follow them, follow them. How they make a statement of hypothesis? Just follow it. All right, how about data and methodology? Data, uh, yeah, data and methodology is usually you have, uh, this one is depends on targeted journal because yeah, let, usually you have data and sample, model specific and research design, variable definition, question and development if you are doing survey. In data and sample, if you are doing survey, please remember this for those who are doing survey. Do not forget to tell the reviewer what is your sampling frame. What is your sampling technique? What is your sampling procedure? What is your sampling size? How many you send the questionnaire? How many is the retention rate? Or in other words, how many from those, let's say you, from those distributed questionnaire, how many is coming back or return to you? How many return to you? And then you can, you have to also discuss uh, about have, is there any possibility of non-response bias or not? Why? Let's say this is why you have to put also the period of your survey. I'm still talking about the survey. I'm not talking about the secondary data. Let me talk about the survey first because the survey, this data and methodology, you have to put that. If your period is more than three or maybe more than four months, let's say your survey is six months, you have to do the non-response bias test to make sure the, the uniformity of the, the return questionnaire to you. There's, so again, I repeat one more time, this, for the survey research design, don't forget your sampling frame. Okay, don't forget your sampling frame. Don't forget your sampling size, your sampling technique, your sampling procedure, the sampling period, and 
if the sampling period is more than four months, let's say four or five or six months, you have to put the wait, you have to test the non respond bias. How about for the secondary data, those who are or the uh, for the secondary data? For the secondary data, you just need to tell them the period, the source from where you got the source. Let's say you get from the Thomson data stream, World Scope, Bank Scope, O series, Orbis, Annual Report, what else? Yeah, and all those secondary data, World Bank Report, IMF Report, and so on and so forth. You have to mention it in which period. You have to mention it. And what is your sampling, still sampling frame? What is your sampling technique? That's it. How about those who are doing experiment? Those who are doing experiment, you have to tell the reviewer or the editor about the, the scenario of your experiment. Is it natural a nature experiment or quasi-experiment? Uh, do you do the manipulation check or not? Okay, you have to mention it inside your data and in data and methodology. Okay, now to metal specification and research design. If you are from accounting and research, uh, accounting research or finance research, you need this one. But if you are not from accounting or finance or economics, you're not necessary to have this one. I give you the example of the SMJ and Najef. If you look at the Najef, sorry for this, I saw you the first Najef. Uh, yeah, this is the Najef. You look this finance paper, they will have that. The model specifications. This one, oh, they call it a specification of model, same. Model specification. Okay. However, if you go to the management paper like strategic management journal, you will not find it. You will not find it. So again, it depends your targeted journal and your field. Variable definitions and question of development, you have to mention inside your in your data and methodologies. Uh, now the trend is, uh, this is the important part. The trend is the variable definitions you put in the appendix. You put on the appendix, okay? You put on the appendix. Uh, look at your targeted journal. You can put on the appendix. Okay, that is data and methodology. Okay, the estimation model, research model, uh, the variable definition, survey, secondary data. So again, the tip is benchmark. Means look at your targeted journal, how they, outline the data and methodology because each journal, each field, they will have different style. Especially accounting and finance and economics will different from the management. Operational, the operational management, they also have or operational research, they will have different style. So be careful. Look, what is your targeted journal, okay? Let's go to the results. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, you also can put on the chat box. You can, uh, if you want to ask also in Indonesian language, feel free for that. If you have something for me, uh, something to repeat or to, to refresh about it, let me know also. So anyway, while waiting for you to put the question in the chat box, let me go to the results sections. The same again. In result, usually you have descriptive, Findings and robustness check. Okay. What is the common mistake in the descriptive? In the descriptive, when you write the paper, what I really hate to see the paper is you only say that the mean value or the standard deviations, the mean value of this, this one, the mean, and so on and so forth. That is not descriptive statistic. Why? I'm, I, I mean, no need to tell me about the mean value from your descriptive table. I can read it. But I want to know your research, your descriptive statistic, how far it is from the previous study. 
how is the variance of your mean and standard deviation? Will it disrupt your uh, or disturb your uh, regressions or not? And is it highly dispersed concomitant variation? Is it make sense compared with previous research? I have this. Why I choose this paper for you because this paper is good in writing the descriptive statistic. Look at the descriptive statistic from this paper. Table one present the summary. Blah 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 blah. Okay, the mean value of province Q is one point one three eight eight which is lower than average value of 1.19 reported by Huang et al. See? And relatively, the average Tobin's Q value from different market is higher. And the range is ranging from 1.8 to 2. This is descriptive statistic. Most of the researcher, what you're going to do, you will put, okay, the mean value of Fabinsky is 1.1. Meanwhile, the, uh, the what, liquidity is 5.3. So what? I can read it from this paper. I know. No need to tell me. I can, I can read it. But what is the story behind that? Why this is important? Recently, I become... A reviewer from one journal uh, from one journal is Q2 high impact journal it's Q, uh, Q3 Q3 high impact not Scopus is uh, SSCI so the the problem with this paper is that it's about financial distress I hope you guys know about financial distress Altman Z score financial distress is uh, indications whether the, the company have a financial problem or not the threshold of financial distress the Altman z score is 1.8 okay please remember it's 1.8 um the literature in indonesia usually is only around three or four because they i think around three something because they have different variable to calculate the distress in indonesia so this paper is from indonesia the Altman z score is 6.8 or seven let's say seven Seven. It made me think, okay, if the mean value of your Z score of Altman is seven, it means that there's no company in Indonesia have financial problem. In fact, that if you said the mean value is seven, it shows that the, all the company is healthy. All company doesn't have, not all, average, sorry, average the company is healthy because seven is very far for 1.8 or from one literature in Indonesia is three. Your score is seven. Why so high? So can you imagine that? Because of this simple mistake, your papers got rejected. Why? It gives perceptions to the reviewer. You are calculating it wrongly you're calculating it wrongly i'll give you example the most common mistake in finance research is the tobin skew this is the funny thing most of the researcher is a lecturer when you teach financial management corporate finance we always say that tobin skew threshold is one correct lower than one and higher than one or under value over value right but you are, if you look at Indonesian's paper, they put the Tobin's Q value, it's like five, six, five, six. Okay. Does it mean all or effortlessly Indonesian's Tobin uh, firm value is very good? So it gives signal to reviewer that you are wrongly calculate the Tobin's Q. Another example, return on asset. If you are doing return on asset research now, check your ROA. Generally, the ROA in, in Indonesia is around 3 to 7%, averagely 3 to 7%. Unless you are doing COVID study, then it's lower. But if you are doing before the COVID, means your sample is 2019 and lower, most likely your ROA 
is three to seven or maybe three to nine percent or eight percent averagely. If your ROA minus five percent, minus ten percent, there's one study, the ROA of the listed company in Indonesia that I review is 42 percent. And make me think, how come return profitability in Indonesia, listed company in Indonesia, the averagely Averagely is 42%. Maybe one company, yes, but in average, it cannot be. It usually three to nine percent. So this is why I told you about descriptive statistics, which is most of the researchers always forget. I'll give another example in survey study. Survey study using Likert scale. You say that you are using one to five, correct? One to five. How come your minimum value is zero? If I see the minimum value is zero, it means to say that you, have, you, you make the coding wrong. You, are, you wrongly code the, the respondent questionnaire. Because Likert scale is one to five, you mentioned it in your research design, but in your mean value in the descriptive, you have zero. Or what is another common mistake? You still remember that, Sometimes we code 99 or we code nine if the respondent put, uh, do not fill in the questionnaire or they, or maybe it's wrong or, or it's, it's the code if it's the code if the questionnaire is not fulfilled correctly. usually we put nine or 99 right. And you forget to you, you forget to eliminate it. So what happened? When you make the mean value, it becomes very high. Why? Because you forget to delete the 9 or 99 code, the coding of 9 or 99. So this is the descriptive statistic, the important part. The important part uh, in your research, either you're doing survey of, uh, or, or the secondary data. Okay. Report only the result of key variable, three to five paragraph. And I want to make note about misleading normality and multicollinearity issue. Some study, they, they rely on correlations matrix as multicollinearity, which is wrong. Correlations matrix is an indication of multicollinearity, but it's not the multicollinearity test. If you want to know whether there's multicollinearity or not, then you have to test the multicollinearity test, which is, for example, the most common or general one is uh, variance inflation factor, the VIF. Of course, high correlations maybe indicate there's a multicollinearity, but it does not mean a multicollinearity. So please carefully in your multicollinearity. Another is part your normality. Uh, normality, the most common mistake is that, okay, I have a problem in my normality, I just delete all the data. The only data that you only that the only data that you can delete is your outliers. But it doesn't mean because your data is not normal, you will start you start deleting the data. And please remember in Econometrics 101, normality is about residual, not your data distribution. Again, you can you can omit or you can delete your outliers. But after that, that's it. If you're all, you're, there is no more outliers and your data is still not normal because the residual is still there, make your, uh, yeah, make the variance is not equal to zero, then don't ever delete more data until it's normal. That's wrong. Please remember this in normality. Okay. In survey, you have reliability and validity. If you still remember, I give you paper. I, I saw your paper last week from Prof. Ramaya. Uh, that is really good to benchmark if you are doing survey, especially those who are doing PLSM or CBSM. So if you are doing AMOS, Listrel, or PLSM, uh, sorry, Smart PLS, you can benchmark from the paper that I put on your Google Drive. Check the Ramaya paper. Uh, networking, blah, blah, blah. I forgot the full title from Ramaya and Jason Lee. Now, Jason is a Ibu Rizna friend. So you can check it and then you can benchmark how to, to, 
to show the result of uh, reliability and validity test. Okay, how about the test, the result itself? The CRM test, the classical linear regressions model, the four in Indonesia, I know this, this is the, the famously known as the four uh, classical assumption tests, which is normality, multicollinearity, heterocadacity, and autocorrelations, right? No need to show it in your manuscript. No need to show it in your manuscript. So now check your draft draft, your rough draft now. Is it inside your manuscript you have the result of normality, heterocadacity, multicollinearity, or autocorrelations? If yes, delete it. Throw it away. You just need to mention, because I know some Sinta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they need this, right? But not in the good reputable journal, especially if you are aiming Scopus. If you are aiming Sinta 6, Sinta 5, then yeah, maybe. But not in the reputable scopus general especially if you are aiming q3 q2 q1 so if you have this classical linear regressions model test autocorrelation hetero hetero auto multicollinearity and normality you just need to mention it in one or two paragraph just need to mention it i repeat one more time you just need to mention it one to two paragraphs uh, not paragraphs sorry sentences uh, my bad one to one or two sentences. Do not show your normal test result, multicollinearity result, heterocadacity result. No need. All right. We just need to mention it that okay, this results before we estimate the model. We have run the classical linear regression model assumption test, which is blah 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 blah, and the result so there is no violations on the CRM test. That's it. Okay. If you are doing survey, don't forget your reliability and validity. If you are doing disclosure, I know some of you are doing maybe, no, I, I guess, not I know, sorry. I guess some of you may be doing the disclosure, CSR disclosure, uh, CARB, uh, ESG disclosure, any type of disclosure, uh, risk, risk disclosures. Do not forget, you also have to test the reliability test, but no, no need to show the result. You just need to mention it. But if you are doing survey, it depends on your targeted journal. Most of the journal, they love to see your reliability and validity test result. Most of them. Show it. Have you done the Cronbach Alpha, your reliability? Have you done the discriminate validity, construct validity? Where's the AVE result? Right? If you are doing experimental, don't forget about the manipulation checks. Do not copy paste the output from the software. This is the, another common mistake. For example, this one from eViews. You copy paste because you do not have time. I'm not saying this, the, you are lazy, but most likely you, are, you don't have time for that. You just copy paste. Ah, I have the output from the eViews. I just copy paste it. No, don't do that. It's wrong. This one is wrong. Or sometimes from the SPSS like this, you copy paste. This is also wrong. Make it like this. Do not have the vertical line. Don't have the vertical line. You just need the horizontal line like this one. Okay. Make the. You know that sometimes, uh, check again your draft, your manuscript. Look at your table now. You have this wrong. If you have this, it's wrong. If you have this and you still have the vertical line here, here, like in, in Excel, we call it as all border, it's still wrong. You only need one above here, horizontal, and then here, horizontal, and the last one, horizontal. Sometimes you want to make another horizontal here above the year fixed effect. Yes, you can. That's it. No need to make horizontal for each variable. No need. Again, no need. You just need to make like this one. Or the new trend. I show you the new trend in research. You showed the confidence interval. You make, uh, at, if you are using uh, Stata or you are using, um, I think Lisrael or I forgot, is it Lisrael have it or not? But for sure, Stata, if you are using R, 
M plus, uh, you have this one. This is the new trend. This is the confidence interval. Remember confidence interval 5 and 95, 5 and 95. This is yes, can. This one, yes. This is no, this is no. So check again your research uh, manuscript, your draft, which one that you have. Um, elaborate the result with the literature discussed in chapter two. This is the, 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 the funny things. We read so many, we read two paragraphs about theory in chapter two. But after you, you have the findings, you do not connect or you do not relate your findings with what you have discussed. What is the theoretical discussion in your chapter two? You do not discuss whether your research is support the theory or not support the theory. If you support the theory, why? How come? If you do not support, why? How come? Most likely after you have the result like this, that's it. Okay, uh, for example, let's say this one, female CEO, not significant. CEO political orientations, it's oh, also not significant. Which one is significant? Okay, firm size is significant. And then you say that, okay, firm size is significant for the strategic change. Okay, so what? Is it? supporting the theory that you discuss in chapter two or not. Of course, you do not discuss the control variable. You only discuss the main variable. Control variable, variable you forget about it. You only discuss about the main effect, which is the CO political orientation, performance base, and the moderating. In this case, in this result. And then you have to connect. Is it support the theory or not? Why? If not, why? If yes, why? So whatever you put on your chapter two, whatever empirical findings you show, whatever the theory that you, you show in chapter two or in the sections two, you have to link it back or you have to link it with your findings. You have to relate it. You have to connect it with your findings. Else, what's the point you put in chapter two? The chapter two, the literature, the literature review is actually the weapon, the tools for you, for your analysis. Okay, I know, I know, now I know how to beat Manchester United. Which is, if I am the, uh, I have to make a counter attack. Let's say, you know how to beat Manchester United by doing counter attack. If, if, if your funding is to beat Manchester United using counter attack, but you do not apply the counter attack when you fight Manchester United, what's the point? The same thing in the research. You know that the finding is uh, what the compensations affect the strategic choice. But which theory support? Is it support the theory or not? If not, what's the point you put it, the theory in chapter two? What's the point you make the hypothesis development in chapter two? And this is the common mistake in research. I'm not asking you have to, to discuss it thoroughly like your dissertation or thesis, but at least one paragraph per main variable, per main variable. The control variable, forget about it, just for the main variable. Okay, please remember this. Otherwise, what's the point you put on your chapter two? Another thing, ah, this is, don't forget to read prior findings, don't forget to read the prior two. No overselling, no of obfuscating. Obfuscating means you make people confused because it's ambiguous. Okay, what about next? Oh, no. So another thing is sensitivity test. If if you realize most of reputable journal, Q3, Q2, Q1, they will have the, what they call as robustness check. And now, if you are doing PLSM, you are doing CBSM, the trend now is the, the reviewer will ask you to test the endogeneity. Endogeneity is a, for finance and accounting is an old story because most accounting and finance research that using secondary data, either time series or panel, we usually have endogeneity tests. 
Either they use GMM, two stateless square, copula, one leg, change indifference, and so on. Now the trend is many of reviewer, if you are doing PLS, SAM, CB, SAM, they ask you to do the endogeneity test, which is most if you are doing survey, the endogeneity test. If you read the hair paper, the recent paper from hair, they will use they, they will ask you to use copula or two states least square. This elsewise. This, I mean, publications is a tough competition. Also, it would be very hard for you to publish them. Robustness check. What is example of robustness check? I will show you after this. I want to finish this one first. Okay. No for sale, no of escape. The conclusions. How to write the conclusions? Conclusion, usually you use three to four paragraphs yeah some some journal need only one to two paragraphs but usually to three to four paragraphs paragraphs one usually is overall conclusions okay paragraph one is usually overall conclusions followed by the contribution of the study this is the one that we discussed last week it appears again in chapter in conclusions even though in introductions you have discussed this one two three it appears again in your conclusion However, you have to add its practical implications. What is the practical implications of your finding for policymaker or to industry or to shareholder or to investor? No need to take everything. I have, no need to have policymaker and industry and shareholder and investor. No need. You can choose one or two, the managerial implications. Okay, and then followed by the limitations and suggestions. I, I saw you first the example for the robustness test. I, I hope you can see this. Oops, sorry. Let me share the, the example of the robustness test. Okay. This is the paper from uh, Lee Camping just now. Uh, yeah, Lee Camp, yeah, anyway. I call him Lee Kamping. So this is the, the basic model. He, uh, Dr. Lin, Dr. Kamping tested it using the panel data, using white heterocadastic and double cluster fixed effect. However, they make a robustness check. What I like from this paper, they have so many robustness check. One, about the alternative measure of liquidity. I give you an example. Let's say your study is about political connections. Maybe the political connections can be measured by the ratio of politicians as the board members. Or another alternative measure for political connection is if there, if there's a politician, you put one. No matter how many, no matter is the ratio, you put one. It's become categorical variable one. If there's no politicians on board, you put zero. That's an alternative measurement. Or let's say, uh, what else? Yeah, usually in the liquidity measure, you have you can use the 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 volume. You can use Ami Hood twenty two. You can use the low and shoot two thousand seventy. You can use also um, uh, Lee. Paperly at all, I think 1998, if I'm not mistaken. So you want to show that, okay, don't worry. With different measurement, the result will be the same. The, not the result, the conclusion will be the same. Uh, this is with different measure. If, you, if there is no alternative measurement, it's okay. In case you have alternative measurement. And then this result also test the endogeneity. endogeneity uh, endogeneity so they said that okay this is also test the endogeneity which is like in variable change in variable and then i think they have gmm oh, yes, gmm so one two three four to test the the endogeneity test one two three four 
So my point is that now you have to have this kind of uh, robustness test for your research if you want to get published in good pay in good journal. How about if you ask me, let's say you ask me, how about in in uh, a survey? Survey is the same. I saw you my paper doing PLSM about uh, determinant of, in, uh, this one is not yet published. We are aiming, uh, you see, this is our code actually. We are aiming BMC public head impact factor 2.15. This is our title. Right, let's go to the, the result. Okay. Even though I'm I'm using PLSM because I know that the reviewer will ask about the endogeneity test. I will test this one. I use two state least square. I use MLSM. Why? Because now the trend is the reviewer will ask you the endogeneity test even though you're using SEM. So if the reviewer want to ask me about the, how about the endogeneity issue? Okay, the endogeneity issue, I will solve it with two state least square and MLSM. Anyway, this is because my job in this paper is for the result and estimation model. This is the pay. If you want to know the, the, the paper that related for those who are doing survey, these are the paper. You, I, I can put it on the Google Drive later on, don't worry. All the paper, uh, all the uh, paper that I use for the endogeneity test in survey. Stop share, Let's stop share this one. If I forget, just let me know. Oh, but I will not forget easily. But yeah, I can open. And that's the thing. Don't forget that uh, endogeneity test. What is endogeneity test? Endogeneity test is make the unops. Okay. To make it simple, it's like this. When we learn statistic, right? We know that y equal to alpha plus beta x, and we interpret it that x will affect y. And behind that, we have plus epsilon, the error terms. What is the error terms? The E. Error terms, it means that there are an observed variable that may affect your Y, correct? Maybe an observed error can affect your Y, which is out of your research. It's out of your research. So these error terms, if it affect your y or it affect your x or it makes your y affect your x so reverse causality so let's say uh, financial innovations affect return on a set now return on a set affect the financial innovation reverse causality this is what we call as endogeneity that's why i told you from the earlier this is very common thing in accounting and finance, we 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 have to we have to make sure there's no reverse causality. We have to make sure there's there is a simultaneity. We have to make make sure the measurement error is good or uh, is there's not there and so on. So therefore, this endogeneity test you have to make sure is not in in your uh, if it's appear it will not affect your conclusions. It will not affect your conclusions. So that is how. Uh, how you have to test the endogeneity. So how to win? So this is how to construct. I already told you how to construct. This is the last one. So make sure that how to win is based on the collaborations. You have to make a collaboration. If you are weak in econometrics, you have to find your friends that are good in econometrics. If, if you have an idea, but you do not, for example, you, you have idea about psychology, but your background is finance, you collaborate from faculty of psychology. Like my case, I collaborate with people from biomedic. The paper about the cancer just now is the collaboration from biomedical and finance is me and uh, from the language school. In, uh, in Indonesia, language school is like uh, later faculty, which is Fakulta Sastra. You can collaborate. And then you have to find a suitable journal. 
and then you have to do the dumping strategy means to say that if you want to publish two or three this year you have to have at least four to six papers submitted last year i repeat if you want to have two to three paper this year in Scopus, you have to have at least submitted paper four to six last year. If you start now, most likely it will be published next year. If you want to have next year one Scopus, submit at least two, scop uh, two paper this year. I repeat, if you want to have one paper next year, you have to have at least two to three papers submitted this year. That we call as dumping strategy. Your writing style, is benchmarking and then don't forget the cover letter cover letter also important i will show you the the thing after this this is the collaborations i use trello trello is one apps to make a collaborations and then it's very easy to identify who works who doesn't work who become free rider i put the job segregation the link to the journal this is we benchmark from these two journal agriculture economics and health economics so everything about the write-ups will refer to these two journal because we aim this journal. If you, we cannot publish this one, it's okay. We aim lower and lower. But at least we have the benchmark from these two journal. Uh, this is the software. Uh, this is the name of the collaborator. Why so many? Because we have two papers. One is about productivity. One is another, about, another one is about health economics. Okay, and then uh, this is the bad example of cover letter. I take it from IJBS. For example, you don't write a cover letter. Please find and cause a copy of manuscript, principal author, blah, blah, blah. No, this is not how you do that. Or uh, you see even the name of the editor-in-chief, our editor-in-chief is Dr. Evan Lau, and this is wrong. How come you want to put the name, but you put the name wrongly? So better, don't put the name. You said, dear editor, dear professor. Much better than you put a wrong name. And you see that this is doctor and this put, and then he put his name. A test are three manuscript. And then when is the upcoming issue? Until when you will let me know about the acceptance letter? Come on. This is wrong. You cannot put like this. What is the good example of a letter? It's this one. Dear Prof, our research group submit our project entitled Do Muslim Prefer Islamic Capital Structure? This is blah, 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 and so on. This is the research all about in terms of methodology, how many, how many pages, and so on. This is the best one. This is the okay one. Our research group submit our project entitled Does Reputation Matter for Farmers in Developing Country? This current project explore, and then it... Uh, this one also okay. Much better than this one you ask. This article is an academic requirement for fulfillment of my PhD degree. There's a, there's a time constraint. May I request him to expand it this matter? <laughs> what? I, I mean, who are you? So you ask us to make you a priority. Yes, you can make you a priority, but not this, this is not how to do that. So be careful in writing a cover letter. Cover letter is your pitching deck your pitching deck when even though maybe your paper is good and then because it give a bad impression during the desk review meeting we simply say oh look this cover letter something wrong and then maybe we do not read your paper we just directly reject it so cover letter is important right cover letter is important how about fast track uh uh, this one I found a question in one Facebook group in Facebook, uh, Facebook group called Scopus Journal Indonesia about fast track. Fast track is actually ask the editor to put yours as a priority, like this one. But if you want to make a fast track, you don't push like this. You can say that after blah blah blah. After, let's say this one uh, before. Through this late this cover letter, uh, before through this cover letter, you can say that uh, this research is based from my PhD thesis. Uh, this thesis, and then you can ask, is there any fast track review in your journal? If if yes, do you mind to tell us the do you mind to tell us the procedure for fast track review, please? Before this through this cover letter, you can ask that politely. 
And when we read it, maybe we do not reply your message. We directly go to the fast track. Most good journal, the fast track is free. It's not like your Sinta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know some Sinta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. When the author asks for fast track, you, they double the APC. No, a reputable journal will not do that. For At least for IJPS, I will ensure you, I'll make sure that there is no double APC if you ask fast track. You just need to put before the true discover letter, just ask that uh, this letter is from my PS, uh, is for my PSD requirement. And then, do you mind to, if I want to apply for fast track review, do you mind to share the information about it, please? That's it. All right. So that's about how, about cover letter, which is important. Now go back again how to win, which is the one that I keep telling you from the beginning. Uh, this one you can read it uh, later. Publication is a game, right? Publication is a game. And sometimes this is the sad truth. It needs a networking. And this explains why some person that you look at the publications, they can publish in top journal with the just so-so or ordinary people, right? Because publication is a game. And when you know how to play it, you can publish in a good journal. One way of to do that is collaborations with the top authors. Collaborations with the top authors. For example, you want to collaborate with Michael Doling, Amine Tarazi, uh, Brian Lucy, who else? Uh, many more. When you can reach them, those top author, it will be make your life easier to publish in the high impact journal. In, it will make easier for you to high impact journal if you have the networking. So how to start the networking? If you are the top management in the, your faculty, in your university, when you send lecturer to study leave, means to pursue a PhD, abroad, much better you ask your lecturer to be supervised under a editor-in-chief of a top journal, under a, under a top, uh, under editor-in-chief of a top journal, no matter what is the university, because sometimes the university of editor-in-chief in top journal is not a top university, it's just a level B university but they are a very prominent professor. You can send them there, that's one thing. Second, maybe you can simply email them. You email them and ask them, oh, uh, can you collaborate with me to make this paper? I have this paper, blah, 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 blah. I make your paper as the reference. Maybe you are not aiming to pub, don't say that you're aiming to publish in his journal. Let's say one professor, uh, let's say professor A, Journal, uh, journal of, let's say, journal of what? Uh, journal of uh, management. Yeah, but there's a journal. Let's say journal X. Professor A is editor chief in journal X, and journal X is a very top journal. You ask this professor A to collaborate with you, but do not aim to. Don't say that you aim to journal X. No, no need. You say that I aim to journal Z, which is a top journal also. Because if, if, if you aim a lower tier journal, that top author, they do not care. They will not just read your email, then they ignore you. You say that I also I, I aim to publish in the top journal like business venturing or in the journal of management. I have this paper, do you mind? You ask them, but it's by luck only. Sometimes if it's successful, then you can go together with them, publish in that journal. So this is the sad truth. Sometimes in public, not sometimes, I will, I will not use the word sometimes. In publications, who is your collaborator, it play important role, play important role. I give you an example. If your name as a first author and I'm the managing editor of IJBS and the second author 
is let's say um, a top author. Let's say Anna Harfotova just now, the ecological economy. Hey, Anna Harfotova sent paper with sent paper to IJBS. What I'll do? I will pass the desk review. No need to go to the meeting. And then when the review reply, and then let's say the review rejected your paper with Anna Harfotova. I will read again. How come this paper will be rejected by the reviewer? When I say, oh yeah, it's deserve to be rejected, then I will reject. But if I read the paper and then I think this still can have a chance as a major, even though the reviewer say reject, I will give to the author back as a major. Why? I need the Anna Harfotova in IJBS. The sad truth. Especially if you put, I, I'm telling you the truth now. If you put, for example, uh, who's uh, 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 Madam Kofi Fah as your co-author, or uh, Mr. President Jokowi as your co-author, I will, or or those top name, I will think again. So collaborator is important. Who is your collaborator will be very important. This is the sector in publication. That is why I told you there's the X factor in publications. Sometimes it's about the collaborator. Sometimes it's simply about the luck. Maybe you don't have luck, it got rejected. That paper that published in, in, uh, in BSE 10.3 is actually got rejected in one paper on the impact factor 2.5. Can you imagine my paper rejected in 2.5, but I apply in uh, 10.3, it got accepted. Why? I don't have luck in that journal, but I have luck in BSE. That's another thing. So, about collaborator, another thing is about luck. So, as my closing remark, compare yours and your main references. Ask your college or network to review it for you. Be careful with the free rider. You know, if you ask me to read your paper, it doesn't mean I will become your co-author. I will tell you now especially after the webinar, right? You will send me the paper. I read it, I review it. It doesn't mean you have to put my name, no. For sure, if you put, my, uh, if you ask me, can I be your, uh, can you become my co-author? Maybe I will say no. Why? Maybe your research is so far from my research area. Maybe my concentration is not part of your research. Maybe your targeted journal is different with my uh, mapping, my research mapping. So if you found a professor, a lecturer, that you know that if every time you send paper there and then they ask you to put her or his name as your co-author, be careful. That's a free rider. If only review, supposedly you do not put them as the co-author. Co-author means it's part of writing the manuscript, not as a reviewer. If a, only reviewing part of the co-author, so is it meant all the reviewer that review your paper, become your co-author? No, right. Be careful with the free rider. Go to Scholar Google, check your title. And please remember this. A finished paper is a published paper. So as long as your, pub, your, your paper, your research paper not yet published, it's not yet finished. Make sure it's finished. So I think I stop there. I, the rest I think you can read by yourself. It's not that hard. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, if you have questions, I'm most than welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ray. So we open for the discussion. If there is uh, any question, can ask directly or through the chat. Yeah, it's okay in English or in Bahasa. Yeah, feel free. Apa saja boleh. Any question? Okay, uh, Dr. Ray, uh, may I have a question? Uh, maybe uh, when we waiting for the participant uh, question. Uh, for example, like uh, if we do if we do the uh, thesis, and then in that thesis we have uh, many research gaps. Uh, uh, how is the strategy like uh, if we want to uh, publish? Uh, 
uh, go to publish article should we if we have for, for example like a three or four is a gaps so it should be in one publish article uh, only have a one or two reset gap is there any maximum reset gap that we put in uh, publish article uh -huh. yeah thank yes. you thank you Bo. so yeah actually um uh, in in research there is terms called as uh, salami slicing salami slicing means that you have the data and then you slice 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 like a sushi you slice it and then you make it so many research which is actually they call it as unethical but some people confuse salami slicing with like what with the research squeezing research squeezing is like what Buida asked how about if i have two or three research gap can i publish it separately the answer is yes if if you if if i have let's say my thesis is a big thesis or big dissertation i have three research gap and then of course i will make it as a three papers i will make it as a three papers i i give example i have one student now doing about uh, political connections and political connections and environmental and financial performance so we we have make one paper about it we submit to strategic management journal and then she asked me uh, doctor can i make because we have x m and y can i only make x to y and then my answer to her no you cannot do that why because the research gap is the same the data is different yes the data is different but the research gap will be the same if the research gap is the same the date the data uh, you only you only chopping the data that is unethical however however if you make another point of view for example is it uh, capital structure affect the environmental performance of oil and gas company yes because the research gap is different so you need uh, it's different so you can make second paper so my point is that yes you can have if you have three research gap, you can have three research paper, but make sure research gap one, two, and three are different one to another. However, if you have one research gap, but you have many data, then it's unethical. So uh, to make it to make it simple, it's like this. Let's say you have data about capital structure and financial performance, and your research gap, you can test it capital structure and, and, and financial performance, one research. However, you cannot play around um, like firm performance and environmental performance because capital sector and firm performance are the same research gap. That one is unethical. If you put political connection and environmental performance, yes, because it's different research gap. So one research need one research gap. However, be careful. Do not keep squeezing one research gap become so many paper. I, 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 I noticed that, for example, because you have one moderator, one mediator, then, okay, X to Y, one paper. And then X, M, Y, two paper. M to Y, three paper. So you have three paper. That one is unethical because you, X and Y is actually one research gap. When you squeeze it, that's unethical. That's my answer, yes. You have you, one research gap, one research paper. You have three research gap for your research, that's much better, you have three research paper. How about, let's say, this is another tips. Let's say you only have one research gap, but you need to have two papers for your uh, graduation requirement. For student, if you have one research gap only, you can make this strategy. One paper is the empirical findings, the regressions. You test the X to the Y or X M Y become one research. The second paper is the systematic literature review or the meta analysis from your chapter two. And this is a very uh, nowadays. I think most of the supervisor all around the world, when the student have chapter two already, usually we'll ask them to make the systematic literature review or meta analysis and make it as a paper. So now you have two paper from one research gap, but it's different, right? Why is different? One is, is the regressions result. The other one is from the systematic literature review or meta-analysis, which has come from your chapter two. So if you only have one research gap, 
but you want to have two paper, what you can do is one is the regressions, the other one is the systematic literature review. That's the strategy. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ray. Yes, any other question? Boleh, Mbak, izin ya. Oh, ya, yeah. silakan, Bapak. Ya, uh, biar saya pakai bahasa Indonesia aja. Siap, yes, Pak. Silakan. Ya, uh, uh, Dr. Ray, uh, barusan yang disampaikan menarik ya, Pak. Uh, intinya uh, dari dari penulisan uh, jurnal untuk masuk uh, Scopus sepertinya tidak tidak terlalu sulit yang dibayangkan selama bisa uh, meniru dari uh, existing jurnal yang ada gitu loh. Nah, tapi uh, ada ada beberapa isu yang yang perlu saya sampaikan misalkan apakah dalam uh, penetapan uh, besar besar lingkupnya besar kecilnya sebuah penelitian itu bisa berpengaruh juga terhadap diterima tidaknya satu jurnal misalkan jumlah sampel jumlah sampelnya sedikit dan jumlah sampel yang banyak atau lingkupnya misalkan hanya di satu perusahaan atau di perusahaan besar gitu atau mungkin juga apakah bisa juga yang saya dengar beberapa jurnal lebih menerima jurnal yang menggunakan tools misalkan lebih suka dengan Amos kalau kalau PLS sepertinya masih belum acceptance misalkan seperti itu mohon pencerahannya Pak terima kasih terima kasih Ya, makasih Pak Osir. Pertanyaan bagus banget. Um, saya, oke, okay, saya satu-satu. Saya mungkin dari belakang Pak ya. Pertama untuk masalah software, sebenarnya uh, itu apa hoax, hoax, hoax. How to pronounce it hoax? Hoax lah ya bahasa Indonesia-nya. Uh, bahwa tidak benar kalau ada satu jurnal mempreferensikan satu tools. Kenapa? Karena tools adalah cara untuk menjawab pertanyaan. Dan saya rasa Bapak dan Ibu sekalian sih sudah tahu lah ya, kalau misalnya kita pakai perbedaan antara PLSM dengan CBSM, gitu, yang Listrel versus Smart PLS. Ya, satu yang konfirmatori, satu lagi eksplanatori teori. Jadi nggak ada kaitannya, karena mungkin aja riset Bapak dan Ibu itu adalah eksplanatori, jadi harusnya pakai misalnya PLSM. Tapi karena Bapak, Bapak dan Ibu Confirmatory teori, Bapak akhirnya pakai CBSM, which is Lisrel. Dan Lisrel, Amos, MPET, PLS Grab, R, even Stata pun sudah boleh run untuk SEM. Stata, Smart PLS, itu hanyalah software. Jadi itu adalah nggak benar kalau dibilang software akan menentukan jurnal-jurnal mana itu nggak benar. Kecuali uh, mungkin ada Sinta 3, 4, 5, 6, gitu mungkin ada pak tapi kalau saya rasa kalau udah Scopus Q3, Q2, Q1 itu itu nggak 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 ada kayak gitu pak karena yang 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 juga jadi masalah adalah seperti ini di metodologinya dia bilang pakai CBSM padahal softwarenya Smart PLS nah itu yang suka salah karena kan CBSM softwarenya biasanya Lisrel kalau dia PLSM softwarenya adalah Smart PLS and so on and so forth atau yang suka salah lagi itu kalau di akuntansi dan keuangan Uh, risetnya data panel tapi softwarenya SPSS, nah itu juga suka salah. Itu biasanya automatically reject. Uh, ini, ini pembahasan dari uh, dari software tadi itu nggak benar pak. Kemudian ruang lingkup penelitian yang yang saya suka, yang kenapa saya uh, bilang menarik, um, jumlah perusahaan atau sampling size itu menjadi berpengaruh kepada editor ataupun kepada reviewer. Ketika kita lihat dia ini menguji secara kualitatif atau kuantitatif, itu yang pertama. Atau sorry, bukan kualitatif dan kuantitatif. Dia menguji secara case study atau menjadi deductive reasoning ya kuantitatif. Kalau studinya studi kuantitatif, itu biasanya kita berharap sampling size-nya itu besar. Kalau tapi bukan berarti studi-studi kualitatif itu sampingnya kecil karena banyak banget studi kualitatif itu yang samping size-nya itu juga gede. Nah, kalau Bapak dan Ibu kebetulan studinya studi kasus satu perusahaan. Saya ini saya nggak bahas provinsi atau kota madia ya, saya bahas satu perusahaan. Let's say Pertamina atau Garuda gitu ya. Let's say Garuda lah. Bahas Garuda. Masih bisa publish nggak? Bisa. 
ada banyak jurnal sekarang yang menerima studi satu perusahaan. Saya kasih contoh case, case study jurnal yang di Emerald atau yang punyanya University of Malaya itu juga menerima case study. Scopus, Scopus, Q2. Q2. Itu ini menjawab pertanyaan tentang case study. Tapi jumlah sampling itu jadi seberapa besar, Pak? Jumlah sampling yang besar itu as long as kalau untuk akuntansi dan keuangan kita bisa lihat sih kalau data observasinya itu di atas 100, oh ini is good enough. Tapi kalau observasinya itu di bawah 100, nah ini berarti nggak good enough. Tapi kalau sampingnya itu adalah bank, perbankan, apalagi perbankan syariah, observasinya sekitar 50-100, masih juga oke. Okay. Jadi dilihat konteksnya juga, yang diteliti ini apa? Perbankan kah, perbankan syariah kah, atau overall? Kalau overall, sampingnya, kalau buat saya sendiri, kalau samping overall di bawah 200, buat saya itu tidak make sense. Tapi kalau kalau industrinya adalah perbankan, asuransi, atau bahkan perbankan syariah, 50-100 buat saya masih make sense. Nah, untuk yang survei bagaimana? Untuk yang survei biasanya kita pakai hair at all ataupun yang jumlah panah dikali 10. Itu aja yang diperlukan. Nanti dibahas tentang apakah lewat di normality dan sebagainya. Atau pakai yang sekarang dan bogi. Sekarang dan bogi, dia punya, kalau Bapak dan Ibu beli bukunya sekarang dan bogi, kan dia ada tabel tuh. Tabel kalau uh, total populasi berapa-berapa-berapa, jumlah N-nya itu berapa gitu. Uh, boleh pakai itu juga. Biasanya kan yang sampling yang sekitar di bawah 10.000 ribu itu kan hanya memerlukan sekitar 150 ya, 150 responden. Uh, itu juga boleh pakai sekarang dan bogi. Dia ada tabelnya. Kalau untuk survei, uh, sebenarnya, lebih enak sih Bapak dan Ibu, karena kita boleh pakai yang kalkulator sampling size. Misalnya nih saya ada mahasiswa saya tentang petani petani apa padi, petani beras yang padi lah ya, beras itu. jumlah petani beras di petani padi di Malaysia kecil tuh sekitar 3000 ke 4000. Jadi sampling dia hanya 120 dan dan kita kalkulasikan pakai formula sampling size-nya sekarang dan bugi itu masuk karena dia hanya perlukan 96 responden aja. Dia perlu 96, kita dapatnya 120. Nah, boleh pakai strategi itu juga untuk meyakinkan editor dan reviewer. Kenapa sampling saya di bawah 100? Oh, ini saya udah ngetes di sampling size saya. Ini untuk yang survei ya. Ini untuk yang survei. Untuk yang buat survei sampling size ternyata setelah pakai uh, formula saya hanya memerlukan sekitar 96, nah jumlah sampel responden saya 100, berarti kan di atas uh, threshold. Itu yang uh, mengenai sampling size. Lalu apakah uh, provinsi, kota madya, industri, apalagi yang orang keuangan kan suka pakai per industri itu menjadi perhatian nggak? Oh jelas itu menjadi perhatian. Kalau studinya misalnya kayak studi yang saya tunjukkan tadi adalah masalah lingkungan. Lalu yang saya bahas ada oil and gas. Nggak masalah. Kenapa? Karena oil and gas itu memang bermasalah secara lingkungan. Atau uh, perusahaan batubara, dia memang bermasalah secara lingkungan. Atau masalah perusahaan penerbangan waktu COVID, nah itu juga bermasalah. Nggak masalah, jadi dia dibahas per industri. Yang menjadi masalah apa? Bapak dan Ibu membahas tentang, let's say, uh, capital structure dengan performance industri manufaktur. Itu membuat bertanya-tanya sama editor, lah, Emang apa yang membedakan capital structure-nya perusahaan manufaktur dengan trading atau dengan perusahaan industri lainnya? Kan sebenarnya sama. Kalau nggak ada yang menarik, kenapa harus per industri? Itu yang menjadi permasalahan. Jadi, maksud saya adalah jika ada yang menarik dari kontekstual kita, misalnya kayak airlines, apa, airlines apa, perusahaan penerbangan, selama COVID, perusahaan pariwisata, travel agent selama COVID, asuransi selama COVID, rumah sakit selama COVID, itu nggak masalah. Itu malah bagus banget. Tapi jangan juga bahas capital structure atau apa service quality. Service quality perusahaan penerbangan selama COVID. Emang service quality perusahaan penerbangan sama perusahaan asuransi beda sama COVID? Kan enggak. Jadi nggak masalah kalau per industri asalkan ada tematik yang menarik untuk dibahas di industri tersebut. Bagaimana dengan provinsi atau kota Madya atau kayak contoh yang yang minggu lalu yang kayak Papua ya nggak masalah kenapa ada permasalahan women empowerment di Papua Barat ya kan ya nggak jadi itu yang ditunjukkan 
nggak masalah. Kenapa? Karena masalah masalah woman empowerment itu memang ada masalah di Papua Barat atau ada satu tesis yang saya baru uji di 11 Maret itu tentang gaya kepemimpinan Jawa. Dia ngambilnya cuma di UMKM di Jawa. Ya memang betul kan? Karena gaya kepemimpinan Jawa itu biasanya dilakukan oleh pengusaha-pengusaha Jawa. Kan nggak mungkin dia ambil UMKM dari kampung saya di Brastagi Medan sana kan? Kenapa? Karena UMKM di Medan ya pasti kalau nggak orang Toba, Karo, Mandailing, dan sebagainya. Mana mungkin orang Karo kayak saya nge-apply gaya kepemimpinan Jawa. gitu. Nah, jadi nggak masalah juga Bapak jika uh, gaya kepemimpinan Jawa sampelnya hanya di Pau Jaya. Jawa nggak masalah. Atau kayak tadi contoh yang tahun yang tahun lalu, sehari, minggu lalu, uh, Women Empowerment uh, di Papua. Atau tentang um, uh, apa lagi gender gap di di mana misalnya atau di mana dan sebagainya nggak masalah asalkan ditunjukkan apa yang menarik dari sisi konteks tersebut tapi kalau misalnya nih bapak dan ibu pengaruh eh, kemiskinan dengan kebahagiaan di eh, Malang lah emang kemiskinan dan kebahagiaan itu hanya masalah orang Malang kan enggak itu kan masalah secara seluruh dunia jadi kalau ketika bapak menjual masalah kebahagiaan dan kemiskinan orang Malang pasti editornya akan reject sama halnya tadi service quality perusahaan penerbangan sama covid lah emang service quality perusahaan penerbangan perusahaan tour agent perusahaan rumah sakit manufaktur itu beda beda kan enggak juga jadi intinya seperti itu bapak dan ibu jadi saya mau menegaskan tadi masalah software tuh enggak itu salah yang masalah sample size biasanya kalau untuk yang data sekunder di atas 100 200 tapi kecuali konteks industri kalau perbankan perbankan syariah asuransi itu biasanya kecil di bawah 50 sampai 100 enggak masalah. Kemudian apakah boleh per provinsi, per industri yang enggak masalah lihat di konteksnya. Saya rasa uh, gitu jawaban saya. Terima kasih. Baik, Pak. Terima kasih banyak. Bu Ida izin. Oh, ya, silakan Bu Anastuti. Eh, uh, uh, ya. Boleh. Uh, Pak Ri uh, sebentar Buat Pak Re ada beberapa uh, dari some question in uh, chat box, I think. Oh boleh, saya boleh jawab ibu. Jadi, yes. Oh. And and then we go to Bu Anastuti. Yes. Jadi, uh, oh sorry. So, yang from Ekar Hamaputra, publications game, how to find them in the early game? Okay, this is the one that I put from the earlier. If we are newbie, we are the beginner. We need to find our benchmark first. What is your targeted journal? So, our homework as our homework as a newbie or the beginner in publications, you have to find first your targeted journal. Let's say you are from marketing, then your target journal is Journal of Consumer Behavior or Consumer Research. Find one article, not one, sorry, find two or three articles from consumer research, benchmark from there. That's one thing. So you can look at how they write the consumer, uh, how they write the paper for consumer research paper. That's one thing. How about if we have no relations and network with the reviewer? Not not the review. It's not the network or collaboration with the reviewer. It's for uh, with the top scholars. If you do not have the networking from them, for example, let's say one of your manuscript or your reference late uh, reference paper. Your reference paper comes from, uh, let's say, from one name. Let's say the previous one is from uh, Dr. Lian Kanping. So what you can do is you can contact Dr. Lian Kanping and then ask him, Dr. Lian Kanping, I have the same similar research like yours in that published in North American Journal of Economic and Business and Finance. It's also about liquidity, but my paper is more like liquidity and zombie company, which is different with is is similar but not the same. So you can, when you write the email to him, you persuade him, you ask him, I have the similar paper. Do, do you mind to be my mentor? You know that the word mentor is really have impactful when you write email to them. Do you mind to become my mentor uh, for this uh, article? So, uh, and then we can publish together and then I aim and then tell him or her that you aim a good uh, a good journal let's say uh, emerging market review 
consumer research, economic psychology, journal of finance. You can tell him which one is your targeted journal. It's, it's, it's the same things like in if you are an entrepreneur, you go to the bank or you go to the angel and investor, you will say that, okay, I have this product. This product is blah, 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 and so on. It's really good. Do you want to become my investor? So it's the same case in publications. When you write email, you can tell the, the author that you want to aim, that you want to target. Can you become my mentor and we, we make the paper together? Uh, Lin, I, I, for sure, like uh, Dr. Lin Kiamping maybe can accept you, Prof. Kim Leng also, whoever that you become your main reference. So if you have no networking, you don't have no uh, uh, relations, you have to start emailing one by one. During my PhD degree, uh, during my PhD uh, study, during my PhD study, I keep emailing one by one and ask them. I ask them, do you want to be, do you want to be? Oh, so I give you one example. You, there's one professor very famous uh, doing about marriage family group and the uh, form performance. So if the two family group, let's say family group A and group B, their daughter and son married, will it impact the performance? The author name is Yupana Wiwanata Kantang. Yupa, Professor Yupana was in, in, I think was in Sulalongkorn, now in, in National University of Singapore or, National, or, or, or in Nanyang, I forgot. So I emailed Prof Yupana and asked her, do you mind to become my co-author? Co and Prof Yupana simply said, yeah, send me the paper, let's collaborate. Which is, I haven't done it until today. You know, I emailed her before the COVID until today because the paper not yet finished. After finish, uh, for sure, I will email to him or her. Another story that there's one professor from German about uh, what SEM in panel data, mediating effect in panel data. I told you this story last week. I emailed them. I emailed her also. Uh, Prof. Rohler, can you become my co-author for this paper? I know that you have the similar paper about longitudinal and SEM, but this paper is more on secondary data and panel data, not longitudinal and survey. And they simply said, of course, why not? This is the paper that you can do. What is the job segregation? You know, I'm not, I don't get it wrong. I'm also, I'm not a very, I'm not a famous person in publications game. Uh, so, they do not know me actually. Uh, if I compare to the big name like Yupana Wienata Kantang of or other names, so but still they accept me, they will take me as their co authors. So you can do the same things look at your main reference, who are the big name in your main reference, ask them, Can you become my co? Can we collaborate? Uh, I, I will put I will put the example of the email on the Google Drive later on so you can. Take it as the example. So how you so use that 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 draft that I draft uh, that I put in the Google Drive. How to persuade the big name? Email them. Don't get hard feeling if they do not reply your email. I'm telling you, I send not doubt not dozen. I think more than fifth. No lah, not fifth. I think more than thirty names. I email. This is the funny story that I met uh, from Paris Narayan. Paris Narayan is very. Uh, I think. He, He's still an uh, editor in chief in, I forgot, he's still editor in chief in economic modeling or not, I forgot. But during that time, he's the professor, uh, editor in chief in economic modeling. I went to one conference, global finance conference in Bangkok. I met him uh, during my PhD degree. I asked him, uh, Prof, I make this is for my PhD. Uh, what is your suggestion? And then he made a lot of suggestion. And I asked, her, I asked him, Do you want to become my co author for this paper? He said, No. Because this is not my topic, but I can be your reviewer. You see, I re I email and then reply. I met him in Bangkok. He, he he he. We discuss about it. So don't worry. Even though you are a newbie or a beginner, try look at the name. Another easy example. Uh, another easy strategy is I'll show you. This is the last answer for you. I will show to you to this part. Uh, where's the share screen? Open the Google Scholar. Open the Google Scholar. Let's say your study is about, um, let's say your study is about Islamic banking, right? Islamic banking. So you can, if you dare put here, right? 
the name oh banking my study is about banking i look this one of course you don't go to the big name like demergue kun this is very big name or burger go slow to number if you are if i'm you i will go after number six so number six or number seven this is, so this is six means 60 yeah after 60 this is 21 30 40 50 60 okay so now 60 so this one and then i will check their email one by one how oh this is my my supervisor in birmingham victor murinde i will check their name one by one i will email them from the 61 i start emailing them one and two of course when you want to email you have to make sure they have the similar reasons like yours similar reasons like yours like your project this is another way so for example last northern and then let's say your topic is about uh, bank efficiency or oh, that they don't he doesn't have paper about bank efficiency bank performance don't have <laughs> okay right. anyway yeah something like that i'll, I'll change the name uh, just now victor Mourinho. oh sorry this is profile my bad last sorry that's my bad so oh, okay so you have to find you have to tell him okay i have one paper looks like uh this where's the paper that he's become the first author uh, anyway let's say this one i have one paper similar with this one but i want to end this journal i will read this one similar can you become my co-author that's it you can do that but the more author that you find the more paper that you have to read right that's the thing that's my answer don't worry that you're newbie and beginner everyone if you are from Indonesia or from Malaysia, all of us now still a beginner. No one know our names. That's it. So then I hope I answer questions from Eka Ramaputra, from Denny Gustiawan. Thank you for explaining. Blah, 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 blah. We as beginner one big. Okay. How to ask help in combined instrument program? Ah, 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 okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we have discussed this earlier about about the cons as long as you have benchmark right you have to benchmark it make sure you have check you have check it in the grammarly software that's why i saw you i invest in grammarly software after that then you send to the proofread the good native proofread or they're not their second way before you send to the proofread your you finish your grammarly now finish your grammarly blah 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 you print it, you ask your friend from different faculty. Let's say uh, I'm from you, you are from I'm from psychology and you're from finance and your research is about finance. You ask me to read your paper and then ask him one question. Do you understand what I write here? That's it. If he said do not understand, means your paper is still bad. That's why you need a friend in research a friend in research a good friend in research means help each other i have friend in hr whenever i make a paper i ask him i ask her to read my paper do you understand what i'm my point is and when he said yes and she say yes that is good i have friend in language school if in uh, in indonesia faculty of letters or uh, fakulta sastra i ask him to read my paper do you understand what my point is he said yes then okay if we say no, then problem. However, let's say you have money, you have a good money, then after you do the grammarly, send your paper to the native proofreader or invest in the big publisher proofreader like Elsevier, Emerald, Sage, Springer, but that is very expensive. It's around 800 to 1000 US dollar. If you send your paper to Elsevier, it costs you like 400 to 600, depends how many words you have. So what 
uh, to cut it short, if you have benchmark it, check it in the Grammarly, send to your friend, make sure your friend to, to understand it. If you have money, send to the native proofreader. Do not send it, don't ever send it to the non-native speaker. Believe me, do not send it to non-native speaker. That is my suggestions for you if you want to have that what so called as a linkung with the journal that you're aiming for. You benchmark it, check your English in the Grammarly. After that, you can ask other people to read your paper, make sure they understand. No need for them to review. You just need, don't ask what is their comment. You, your, your, your question is, do you understand what I read? Hey, what I write, that's it. If you have money, send to the native proofreader. That's the answer from um, Mr. Denny Gustiawan. Thank you. Maybe from, ah, that's all right, okay. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Ray. So now we go to uh, Bu Anastuti. Baik, yes. Ibu Ida, terima yeah. kasih. Silahkan, Ibu. Uh, Dr. Ray, sampai ketemu lagi. Terima kasih, Dr. Ray. Uh, Dr. Ray, kemarin, minggu kemarin sudah memberikan komen terhadap uh, draft jurnal yang masih jauh dari uh, apa ya aturan-aturan uh, yang sudah uh, uh, tadi sampaikan oleh Dr. Ray, bagaimana penulisan yang baik sehingga bisa uh, apa di review oleh tim review uh, Scopus begitu ya. Dan kemarin saya sudah menindaklanjuti dengan melihat uh, mengacu jurnal-jurnalnya Ramayah Apple tahun 2011. Mudah-mudahan uh, sudah ada perbaikan. Dan salah satunya dari sisi abstrak uh, jauh sekali apa yang saya sampaikan uh, 250 yang uh, menurut aturan sebenarnya hanya 150 kata. Dan uh, pada hari ini mendapatkan pencerahan lagi uh, terkait penulisan baik dari uh, pendahuluan sampai dengan kesimpulan. Nah ini akan menjadi acuan kami khususnya dalam penyempurnaan penulisan jurnal yang akan kami ajukan. Dr. Ray, tadi disampaikan adanya moderasi yang ingin saya tanyakan bahwa di dalam penelitian saya, saya menggunakan analisis work PLS dan untuk uh, sampel, saya pakai rumus Flovin dari populasi uh, masyarakat petani di Papua itu sebanyak 1.400 uh, petani, sehingga ketemu uh, jumlah responden itu 311. Dari 311 itu, uh, kuesioner yang kembali 264. Nah, setelah kami uji, berdasarkan hipotesis yang saya ajukan, bahwa moderasi yang saya apa, masukkan di dalam hipotesis hanya satu yang memenuhi atau signifikan terhadap hasil penelitian kami. Untuk yang... Kami mengusulkan ada moderasi itu bisa signifikan terhadap X1, X2, X3, terhadap J1, namun yang signifikan satu. Nah, itu merupakan usulan kebaharuan kami. Nah, apakah hanya satu itu pun termasuk bisa diterima? Nah, itu yang kami pertanyakan Dr. Ray dan mohon pencerahan untuk uh, hasil moderasinya itu. Terima kasih. Sama-sama, Ibu. Uh, ya, bah. Jadi uh, ini ada satu hal yang suka kita suka 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 salah kaprah juga sih bahwa hasil yang um, let's say kan kita punya X kebaruan kita X atau moderator atau mediasi. Nah, kebetulan X atau moderator kita atau mediasi kita enggak signifikan nih. Lalu apakah artinya 
uh, kebaruan kita tidak ada. Oh malah tidak. Malah artinya uh, kalau untuk kasusnya Ibu Anas Tutik tadi, malah artinya ternyata uh, faktor moderasi ini tidak bisa menguatkan atau melemahkan hubungan antara atau tidak bisa memoderasi X dan Y dan dan itu sebenarnya bagus untuk untuk body of knowledge atau untuk literatur gitu. Jadi bukan berarti poin saya adalah bukan berarti ketika penelitian kita menghasilkan hmm, datanya tidak signifikan artinya uh, tidak ada kebaruan tidak. Kebaruan itu adalah research gap tadi. Apakah hasilnya kena reject atau kena uh, accept atau signifikan atau tidak signifikan itu masalah yang tidak berkaitan dengan research gap kita. Jadi artinya Meskipun hasilnya kalau kita ambil case-nya Bu Anas Tuti tadi ada satu tidak uh, signifikan, satu signifikan. Apakah artinya kebaruannya hilang? Tidak. Karena kebaruan itu tadi sudah kita bahas di introductions. Nah, apa hasilnya menunjukkan hal yang lain? Itu malah kebaruan. Kenapa? Art, kalau let's say artinya uh, ada faktor moderasi yang tidak bisa mem, uh, ada faktor yang tidak bisa memoderasi hubungan X dan Y. Nah, buat saya Sorry, buat saya yang men, yang suka salah di moderasi itu adalah sebagai ini bu, sebagai berikut lah ya. Uh, satu, ke, kalau ibu dan bapak pakai tes moderasi, ternyata moderasinya itu signifikan. Kalau tes moderasinya itu signifikan, to, uh, harusnya sehar, bukan seharusnya, harusnya saya pakai kata harusnya, ibu dan bapak itu menyediakan uh, moderating uh, moderating plot. Kayak, kayak icon at all 2002 kan. Saya lupa tahun berapa. Icon. Itu harus ada moderating plotnya. Nah, untuk orang-orang yang pakai smart PLS, moderating plot itu sudah disediakan. Apalagi smart PLS 3 point something. 3 point 3 kah sekarang, saya lupa. Tapi untuk orang-orang yang kayak data-data sekunder, yang nggak tahu cara membuat moderating plot di startup, itu harus dibuat, dibuat secara manual moderating plotnya. Nah, yang suka salah itu adalah kebanyakan oke, okay, kebanyakan data-data yang sudah uh, yang pakai data sekunder ataupun data survei, data primer, moderating plot moderasinya itu signifikan, tapi tidak ditunjukkan moderating plotnya. Kalau kayak kasusnya Ibu Anas Tuti kan tidak signifikan. Kalau tidak signifikan yang enggak apa-apa, jangan tunjukin moderating plotnya. Tapi kalau Bapak dan Ibu yang sekarang ini punya moderasi dan hasilnya signifikan, tolong disediakan moderating plotnya itu ada ada saya kasih Excel file dari Dawson 2014 di chat box bapak dan ibu boleh lihat boleh download nanti um, I think nanti pun saya akan masukkan juga sih oh, banyak banget ya, saya janji janji palsu gini kayak politisi udah saya saya um, masukin juga di di dalam uh, Google Drive jadi intinya inti dari saya adalah Uh, kalau bapak dan ibu ternyata moderasinya tidak signifikan, jangan takut it, kebaruannya masih ada. Itu yang pertama. Nah, kalau ternyata signifikan, jangan lupa sertakan moderation plotnya di dalam manuskrip. Kalau kasusnya Bu Anas Tutik kebetulan tidak signifikan, jadi nggak perlu lah ditunjukkan. Tapi kalau mungkin ada bapak dan ibu sekarang buat moderasi, kebetulan moderasinya signifikan, tunjukinlah moderation plotnya seperti apa. Itu dari saya. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Dokter Re. Oke, okay. uh, thank you, uh, Bu Anas Tuti and Dokter Re. Do we still have a question in chat box? We still have a uh, 10 minutes. Uh, maybe anyone have a question? And I want to remember uh, remembering that uh, please fill the attendance form and the feedback form. Jadi mohon diisi untuk uh, form absensi dan juga untuk form feedback, Bapak-Ibu sekalian. We still have a 10 minutes for the question. Izin, Bu, uh, kalau dengan Gisman nih, Bu, kalau apa form yeah. absensinya di mana, Bu? Uh, di chat box, Bapak, di paling atas. Oh, chat box, ada, ya? Iya, ada link absensi. Oh. Yeah. Oke, okay, baik, baik, Bu. Ya. Yeah. Baik, Bu, terima kasih, Bu. Ya, yeah, sama-sama, Bapak.
Maybe still have any question? Bapak I Ibu. think not, but thanks a lot to Merenda, to Bu Ida and Rendra for the explanation about the writing uh, prepared for uh, dissertation uh, proposal. I think better for the next. We are direct to discuss to Mrs. Ray, Ibu Ida. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Pak Jisman. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Ray, maybe uh, there is no more question uh, for today, but we learned a lot today about how to uh, prepare our uh, published article. Um, so thank you so much for everyone that's uh, doing during this uh, research talk for around like uh, three hours, like uh, uh, your passion to join and participate. Uh, thank you so much. And we thanks to Dr. Retu uh, for today. And I will close this research talk. Uh, thank you so much. And good afternoon. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bu Ida. And thank you. Uh, please thank you, you to Mas Ray. Thank you, Pak Ray. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Okay, so sorry. Next. Terima kasih, Pak Ray.